Welcome to the Sports Town Podcast, or the STP Pod for short. No politics, no drama, no arguing. Just two guys talking sports. I'm your host, JJ Peters. Today on the pod, we will go over Week 12 NFL highlights, reaction to the Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. fight, first week of college basketball, and much more. But as always, we do a poll question. You can vote on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And the question is, will Matt Stafford be with the Lions next season? Well, currently you guys are split. I thought you would think thought Matt Stafford wouldn't be a Detroit Lions next season. But according to you guys, you are split with it at 50-50. Again, thanks for voting. You can always vote on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, the Jacksonville Jaguars have fired general manager Dave Caldwell. Trent Balake will be the team's interim GM throughout the rest of the season. Caldwell was hired by the Jaguars in 2013 and brought two uh, and brought in two times Super Bowl champ Tom Coughlin as the team's head of football operations. Caldwell was also also hired Gus Bradley before firing him late in the 2016 season. The rest of staff, the rest of the staff that includes head coach Doug Marone will be with the Jags for the remainder of the season. Jacksonville is the second worst record in the NFL this season, only behind the winless Jets. They upset the Colts in week one, but have lost 10 straight since then. Caldwell was able to lead the Jacks to the AFC Championship game in 2017, but ultimately fell to the AFC Championship game to the New England Patriots. Uh, Caldwell has also had troubles with drafting players, and the majority of his first-round picks are no longer with the team. New York Giants quarterback Daniel Jones will be out for next week with a hamstring injury. Uh, Jones injured in a win over Cincinnati on Sunday. Jones could be back in two weeks, but there is still no timeline yet. The Giants currently lead the awful NFCs with a tiebreaker over the Washington football team. Jones is a very tough quarterback and will be ready very soon, according to Giants head coach Joe Judge. Danny Dimes this season has thrown eight touchdown passes, nine interceptions, 2,335 yards, and a 67.2 QBR. Backup quarterback Colt McCoy will start in place of Jones versus the Seahawks. McCoy is a veteran who spent time with Cleveland and Washington. McCoy was able to lead the Giants to a win versus the Bengals. However, McCoy has not won a start in his career since 2014 in Washington. McCoy was a former All-American at the University of Texas. Uh, For the third time, the Ravens-Steelers game has been postponed. This time, they are moving it to Wednesday at 3.45 p.m. Eastern on NBC. It was first reported by CBS Sports insider Jason Lockapore and confirmed by ESPN's Adam Schefter. The Steelers game versus Washington has been moved to next Monday. The Ravens game versus the Cowboys also has been changed for the third time, this time to Tuesday on Fox. According to ESPN's Dan Graziano, there was no new positive test on Monday, but the NFL moved in an abundance of caution. The Ravens facility was reopened on Monday to do a walkthrough for the first time since November 20th. Will Fuller of the Houston Texans has been suspended six games by the NFL for violating the performance-enhancing substance policy. Fuller said it took the, he took the prescribed medicine that he thought was allowed by the league. Fuller stated on Instagram saying, Earlier this year, I sought treatment from a medical professional who prescribed, mentioned, who prescribed medicine excuse me, that he believed to be permitted under the NFL's drug policy. As it turns out, my trust in this, in this professional was misplaced because this medicine was not per, uh, a permitted substance under the NFL policy on performance-enhancing substances. The NFL... Um, Actually, sorry. As a result of this mistake, I've been suspended for six games for taking this prohibited medicine. I want to sincerely apologize to the Texans organization and all the fans for this mistake. I'm looking forward to putting this all behind me and returning better than ever in 2021. It's unfortunate for Fuller as he most likely will not be retained by the Texans as he is an unrestricted free agent. Before the suspension, Fuller led Houston in receiving and was having, the, was having his best in his career. The San Francisco 49ers are not allowed to play in their home stadium at Santa Clara, California, because of the city government shutting down contact sports for at least the next three weeks as a result of COVID-19. It was announced on Monday that 49ers will play their next few home games at State Farm Stadium, home of their rival, the Arizona Cardinals. San Francisco 49ers head coach Kyle Shannon was not happy that the city did not give them any warning. He was reported that the 49ers were not notified until the city had made the announcement. Nowhere yet the 49ers are allowed to play in Levi Stadium on Sunday in Week 17 versus the Jets. Many are expecting that the 49ers will just play at Arizona for the rest of the season. And finally, seven-time Formula One champion Lewis Hamilton has tested positive for COVID-19. Hamilton is one of the greatest Formula One drivers of all time and even stacks with Michael Schumacher, who most Formula One fans believe is the greatest of all time. Hamilton tested positive Monday morning, the day he won the Bahrain Grand Prix. Hamilton was not will not be eligible for the 
Sakir Grand Prix. He also could miss the season final at Abu Dhabi. A few weeks ago, Hamilton was considering not returning to Team Mercedes. Well, college basketball is back, and the first week is officially in the books. The second week will begin this Monday. I'm so glad college basketball is back. It feels like it's been forever since we had it last, as you guys all know. It was canceled last year because the coronavirus and was one of the first sport, like one of the really big first sporting events to cancel. And uh, last week, basketball college our college basketball started back up. Now there were a few hiccups because a few games had to be postponed, but for the most part, a lot of the games were played, including number one Gonzaga and sixth ranked Kansas on Thanksgiving Day. That was a great game, especially with how bad the Texans and Lions game was. That was what we needed, and Gonzaga is a very good basketball team. Um, so I'm glad College Hoops is back. And right now, it looks like we will have basketball in March and April for the college ranks. Um, I understand this isn't from last week. This is actually this week's score. But here's some scores from Tuesday night or Monday and Tuesday night. Number eight, Michigan State beat number six, Duke, 75-69. Number 19, Richmond beat 20th ranked Kentucky, 76-64. And 14th ranked North Carolina held on to beat Stanford, 76-73. Um, so how good is Gonzaga? Well, they're a good basketball team. And right now I think they are the best basketball team. They're, they're definitely, they definitely proved that on Thursday, their offense was so good. Um, that team put 102 points against a sixth ranked, uh, club. That's a great, that's great for Gonzaga. Um, they, they put up the, um, they kind of flexed their muscles with about six minutes left to go and just drilled a bunch of shots. I mean, that offense is good. And um, I'm not sure I can see anybody beating Gonzaga right now, but they do have a really good, um, they do have a really good uh, opponent next. And that's number two Baylor this Saturday on CBS. So I can't wait for that game. Uh, Speaking, uh, speaking of that, um, what is the best game we need to watch out for our best game to watch this week? Well, Gonzaga Baylor's great. Uh, Michigan state uh, Duke is going to be another solid or actually not Michigan state Duke. They already played, but um, I think Gonzaga Baylor is a great game that will definitely will be the probably the best game of the week. Uh, Michigan State and Duke was a pretty solid game on Tuesday. Uh, Michigan, uh, give credit to Michigan State; they're a good basketball team. Maybe Duke's not as good as what they were in previous years, but uh, that was a good game. But I, I can't wait for the Gonzaga Baylor game. It's one and two. It's on CBS. Um, of course, there's no, or unfortunately there's going to be no fans, so that's going to be disappointing. That's definitely going to uh, put a wrench in things, but. I do think that's the game of the week to watch. And uh, whoever wins that gets number one. If it's Gonzaga, they keep number one. If if it's Baylor, they're number one now. So can't wait for that game. Uh, Is there a sleeper team to watch out for? Right now, I would say not because we're just in the first week of college basketball. Uh, We won't really know until the uh, tournament starts. Um, It seems like every year there's always some kind of Cinderella. A few years ago, Virginia got beat to a 16th seed, which was unbelievable. Um, we've had teams run to the final four, like Wichita state, George Mason, Providence, uh, VCU. So we've seen a lot of those teams do it. Um, but I think right now it's a little too early to really decide. And right now, who's the best college basketball player? Well, I think it's Luca Garza, uh, Remy, uh, Remy Martin from Arizona state definitely puts his hat in there. Um, I'm trying to think of there's some other good players. Um, I just don't think anybody's as good as Luca Garza, to be honest. I think he kind of has proved that he is the best player right now, and I, I can't see anybody being better than him right now. And that's really shocking. I didn't think Luca Garza was that great, and then I watched him like, oh, crap, this guy's really good. So, yes, I, I don't know how well he'll do in the NBA, but he's definitely the best basketball player right now. Um, Well, of course, on Saturday night, the big fight happened. My, or Mike Tyson took on Roy Jones Jr., two legends. It was Mike Tyson's first fight. Since 2005, Roy Jones, uh, Roy, J- Roy Jones Jr.'s first fight since 2018. Um, as we all know, he started. Uh, Tyson started his own league with legends like himself, um, and they had a fight uh, versus Roy Jones Jr. It was an exhibition. It was eight rounds, two minutes. Um, but in my opinion, I think Mike Tyson did win the fight. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't much of a um, contest, in my opinion, because Roy Jones was so tired after the first three rounds. I think um, he was hugging Mike Tyson the whole time. It was pretty much domination. Now WBC did uh, WBC did end up judging and say it was a draw. I'm not sure how, but I think a lot of people said that was because Mike Tyson and Roy Jones want to fight again and make even more money. But uh, it was, I don't know if it was really worth it, but I think Mike Tyson won the fight and showed why he's, <laughs> why he's still in shape. 
Um, some other fights in the card were Jake Paul, this YouTube sensation, knocking out former three-time slam dunk contest champion Nate Robinson. Uh, he didn't stand much of a chance. Jake Paul is a better boxer than I thought he was. Uh, I'm not sure he can beat Conor McGregor. I don't think he can, but he wants to uh, challenge Conor McGregor. Um, he says he's a good boxer. Now, he is he is um, trained by a former boxer, but I just don't think uh, Jake Paul is going to be able to even schedule something with Conor McGregor. But uh, that was another fight. Um, former lightweight and middleweight or light heavyweight and middleweight champion Buddha Jack took on um, former military man or former military Nate, Mc, Nate McKinnon. Um, Buddha Jack won an unanimous decision in the eighth round. So congratulations to him. Um, what a move, though, by the military guy. He, he really took uh, Jack the Ripper all the way to the eight rounds. Um, that was very impressive, but uh, it just goes to show you who the uh, better boxer was. Um, also, who who really won the fight between Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr.? Well, as I've, I've, I've said before, I think Mike Tyson won the fight easily. They just wanted to make some more money. Um, I bet they get as many people watching the next one or even more. There's even reports that Mike Tyson wants to fight other players, like do or other, other fighters do like a revenge tour, like, um, other fighters that he's lost to in the past, which would be, I mean, I would watch it. Um, especially if guys like Snoop Dogg and all those guys were, uh, <laughs> broadcasting the fight. So I would definitely, um, buy the next fight, especially if it was on pay-per-view. Um, is Jake Paul a really good boxer? I think he's good for an amateur. I just don't think he can really fight the real boxers. Um, I think we've kind of shown, um, He's, he's kind of showed us that he can box, but not against a professional box because he hasn't fought someone who actually does it for a living. I'm not saying he's a bad fighter. I think he is a, I think he is a good fighter, especially for being an amateur, but I don't think he can beat any of the top boxers here, even a guy that boxes professionally. So, but again, give credit to Jake Paul. He's a very good boxer, or at least he showed it. Um, Tate Robinson didn't seem like he really trained for the fight. He got a lot of, uh, hate on social media, especially from guys like Nick Young. However, Dwayne Wade and Mike Tyson both went to his offense and said, hey, man, get him next time. It's all right. Mike Tyson, or not Mike Tyson, Nate Robinson is a great athlete, though. I mean, he even tried to play football. I mean, this guy is a world-class athlete. I'm just not sure he's a boxer necessarily. Um, other fights in the card you were impressed with. As I mentioned, the former military guy, Nate McKinnon, uh, Nate McKinnon, he was he was excellent. I mean, he took Buddha Jack all the way to the eighth round. Um, just give kudos to him. Uh, that was probably the most uh, the other fight that I was most impressed with. All right, college football over the weekend. Number one, Alabama rolls past Auburn without Nick Saban. And the on Tuesday night, the college football playoff rankings were revealed. Um, then we'll get all we'll get you caught up with all of that. And of course, there was really no big upsets. Um, I was I was thinking there'd be a few more upsets there. I mean, there technically was because Northwestern uh, in the top ten ended up losing to Michigan State, which was weird because Northwestern was having such a great year and they pretty much laid a goose egg versus the versus Michigan State, who was not very good. Uh, but we'll see. Ohio State gets their games canceled again. They are in jeopardy of even making the Big Ten championship game, which I don't think that affects their college football playoff because it's the eye test. So, um, and then the other one, too, was Oregon State defeating Oregon with their backup quarterback on the last second. So he gets a quarterback sneaks, quarterback sneak and wins the game. Just, there was some crazy, crazy things that happened during the Thanksgiving uh, weekend in college football. Uh, what game intrigued you the most? Well, Texas A&M LSU intrigued me a lot. Oregon, Oregon State did as well. But I have to say Texas Oh, no, you know, I'm going to say Oregon, Oregon State. That was a great game. Um, man, that went right down to why I didn't think I, – I thought Oregon was going to win the game. I really think they got a good quarterback. Um, I just thought Oregon was going to win that game. But Oregon State says no. They were – Oregon led 24-13 at the half, and I thought that was controlled by Oregon. But Oregon State somehow comes – with a huge win, so give credit to the Beavers. Um, does o OSU still get in the playoffs if they're not able to make it to college or make it to the Big Ten championship game? Absolutely. I mean, they're first of all, they're Ohio State. Second of all, I think they've passed the eye test. And third of all, they have the best quarterback in the country. So I can't see why they would leave out Ohio State. They've done that before. I think it was back in 2016 or 2017. They didn't even make it to the Big Ten championship game because they lost one game. But even though they were better than Penn State and Wisconsin, who went to the championship game, and they made the college football playoff. They ended up getting beat by Clemson, who won the national championship that year. But 
We've said it before. I still think Ohio State can get in the playoff. And a uh, reaction to the second edition of the college football playoff top 25 ranking. Well, everything was pretty much the same, except I'm not sure I agree with Iowa State being in the top 10. I know they beat Texas, but is Texas really that good? Um, I just I don't agree with Iowa State being that so high, being so high. I think Cincinnati should have been six, and I think BYU should have been in the top 10. Now, they did move up one spot, but I mean, come on, 13th. They're better than Iowa State. Uh, I'm just, I mean, they're the rankings are just giving no love to BYU and they're giving some love to Cincinnati. But I think right now, I mean, Cincinnati still has a chance, but it's, I mean, Ohio, Ohio state has to lose or not play any more games. Cause even if, even if Ohio state was four and oh, I think they'd still make the college football playoff, which stinks for teams like Cincinnati and BYU. And again, that's why they needed to go to eight teams this year for the college football playoffs, but that's likely not going to happen. All right, so now at the MLB free agent tracker, just like the NBA, the MLB is in their offseason, and their offseason has begun. The MLB free agency is not quite as fast as the NFL or the NBA, but it's very entertaining to say the least. Now, the top free agents haven't signed it, but there are some that have, and I'll get you all the updates on who, on who and what the teams have signed. Kevin Gosman is returning to the Giants. He is accepting his qualifying offer from the from San Francisco that is worth up to eighteen point nine million in twenty twenty one. Last season, Gosman was three and three with a three point six two ERA with, I mean, a one point one zero six WAR. Gosman helps out the pitching staff that struggled a bit last season. The Giants still need help though with their pitching staff even after signing Gosman. Uh, Marcus Stroman for the Mets is staying with New York. He's also accepting his qualifying offer worth eighteen point nine million through next year. Stroman, the right-hand pitcher, was 4-2 and two last season with a 3.77 ERA. After accepting the deal, Stroman tweeted, after watching the press, I'm beyond too excited to play for you, sir. I could feel the excitement and passion you're going to bring daily. Let's go be great. New York Mets are still are very busy in free agency lately. They have signed the former right-handed reliever from the Minnesota Twins, Trevor May. It's a two-year contract. The deal will be officially once May passes his physical. He was 1-0 last year with a 3.86 ERA with a 1 point or the 0.1 war. He also had two saves for Minnesota last season. Mike Miner signed, uh, signed a two-year deal with Kansas City. Miner will still need to pass a physical before he can officially sign with the Royals. Miner played with Oakland last season. Miner also played with Atlanta, Kansas City, and Texas. Miner was one and six with a point or with a 5.56 ERA and a 1.124 whip. The 33 year old was an all star in 2019 for Texas. Drew Smiley assigned a one year, $11 million contract with Atlanta. Smiley only started five games for the Giants last year and did make two appearances as a reliever with San Francisco. Smiley has battled many injuries in his career and has even had Tommy John surgery. He missed all 2017 and most of 2018. The 31-year-old has played with Detroit, Tampa Bay, Texas, Philly, San Francisco. Smiley was a huge Braves fan as a kid, so it was a dream for him to play for Atlanta. Smiley brings in depth for the pitching staff for the Braves. Atlanta was one game away last year from making it to the World Series, but eventually lost in seven games to the Dodgers, who eventually won the series, beating the Tampa Bay Rays in six games. The Braves have won the NL East three straight seasons. The Boston Red Sox have re-signed Eduardo Rodriguez to a one-year deal that is worth up to $8.3 million for next season. Rodriguez opted out of the season last year after testing positive for COVID-19 and having a heart condition because of the virus. In 2019, Rodriguez was 19-6, 3.81 ERA, and 213 strikeouts last year. The left-handed pitcher that has been with the Red Sox since 2015 after being traded from Baltimore as an international free agent pickup from the Orioles. Now it's time to get you caught up with all the action that happened in the NFL in Week 12. Let's get it started. Falcons versus Raiders. The struggling Atlanta Falcons hosted the high-flying Raiders. The Las Vegas Raiders had just taken down or taken their Chiefs, Super Bowl champs, down to the wire on Sunday Night Football. But the Raiders would forget to bring their A game as they'd be blown up by the Falcons, who have now won their last three of their last four games. Las Vegas would score a field goal, but they would trail 16 to three at the end of the half. To add insult to injury, Las Vegas quarterback Derek Carr would throw an interception that resulted in a pick six for Atlanta. Matt Ryan 
would throw another touchdown pass this time to Brandon Powell to make it a 36 lead for the Falcons. The last touchdown of the game was an eight yard rush by running back Ito Smith. The Falcons ended up winning 40 to six. And all of a sudden the Falcons who look like they were tanking are now four and seven. Matt Ryan would throw for 185 yards, two touchdowns and one interception. Ito Smith would rush for 65 yards and 12 carries and add one touchdown. Calvin Ridley at 50 yards receiving and had a score. Derek Carr for the Raiders would struggle as he would throw for 215 yards and one interception. Josh Jacobs had 27 yards through the air, and Hunter Renfro had 73 yards receiving. A showdown in the AFC South happened on Sunday as the Titans traveled to Indy to take on the Colts. The game started out as both would exchange scoring touchdowns. Tennessee jumped out to a 24-14 lead in the first half. The Titans would score again as they had a commanding 35-14 lead at the break. Tennessee's defense came out to play and forced turnover after turnover and multiple punts. The Colts would finally score in the second half thanks to a five-yard touchdown pass from Phillip Rivers to T.Y. Hilton. It was actually T.Y. Hilton's first touchdown of the game. However, just as Indy was gaining momentum, A.J. Brown would score on a 42-yard kickoff return to increase Tennessee's lead. The Colts would turn the ball over on downs, and the Titans would finish the game. They now have the lead in the AFC South at 8-3. Ryan Tannehill threw 221 yards, two touchdowns. Derrick Henry cannot be stopped. He rushed for 178 yards and three scores. A.J. Brown, a nice receiver, had four receptions for 98 yards and scored once. Phillip Rivers, though, had 295 yards and two touchdowns, one interceptions. Hines rushed for 29 yards, and T.Y. Hilton came back and had 81 yards receiving and one touchdown. The Arizona Cardinals were coming off a tough loss versus the Seahawks. The Pats were coming off a bad loss to the Texans as well. Arizona traveled to Foxborough to take on the Patriots. The Cardinals started off hot with a 10-0 lead, but here come the Pats. James White would score a seven-yard rushing touchdown to trim the lead 10-7. That would be the score going into the half. The Patriots would get a field goal and force an interception from Kyler Murray that would result in a go-ahead touchdown by James White to make it a 17-10 lead for New England. A few possessions later, the Cardinals would tie the game from a Kenyon Drake rushing touchdown. The Cardinals' defense would also get a turnover, but Arizona couldn't take advantage and missed the field goal and gave the Patriots one last opportunity. The Patriots would do just that and get a game-winning 50-yard field goal from Nick Folk. Cam Newton wasn't spectacular, but he did throw for 84 yards and two interceptions. Devin Harris had 47 yards, and Jacoby Myers finished with 52 yards receiving. Kyler Murray threw for 170 yards, one interception. Kenyon Drake had 78 yards rushing, and DeAndre Hopkins had 50, 50, uh, 55 yards receiving. After the game, Cam Newton said he would rather have an ugly loss than a pretty win. The Cleveland Browns, man, they keep on winning ugly. The Jacksonville Jaguars have now lost 10 straight games. But again, don't look now because the Browns are 8-3 and three and are currently in the fifth seed for the playoffs and have a better chance of making it than Baltimore does. That's crazy. The Browns would take an early 17-13 lead at the break, but the Jags were hanging on. To start the second half, Cleveland would fumble, and Jacksonville would take advantage and score a touchdown thanks to a Mike Lennon pass to Tyler Reifert, but would miss the two-point conversion to have the game remain 19-17. The Browns got a field goal to take the lead, and then thanks to a Nick Chubb rushing touchdown, they would have a big lead. Jacksonville would score, but missed the two-point conversion. Cleveland held on to beat Jacksonville 27-25. Baker Mayfield threw for 258 yards, two touchdown passes. Nick Chubbs rushed for 144 yards, one touchdown. Jarvis Landry had one of his best games this season with 143 yards through the air and one touchdown. Mike Lenn threw for 235 yards, two touchdowns. Josh Robinson had 128 yards, one touchdown. And Colin Johnson finished with 96 yards receiving and had one touchdown. One of the oddest games in the NFL history happened yesterday in Denver. The Broncos play with the receiver from the practice squad as the quarterback because all their quarterbacks were in the COVID-19 protocol. The quarterback's name was Kendall Hunter. Hunter played quarterback in college, but switched to wide receiver. The game wasn't very close as New Orleans destroyed Denver, naturally. The Saints led the Broncos 17-0 at half. They didn't let up because Latavius Murray would dominate as he would have another rushing touchdown in the second half to increase their, 20, to increase their lead to 24-3. The Saints would get one more touchdown, to take to defeat the Broncos 31-3. Latavius Murray rushed for 124 yards, two touchdowns. Michael Thomas had 50 yards receiving. Taysom Hill didn't play great, but he did get his second win of his season, and he did have two rushing touchdowns in the game. Kendall Hunter was one of nine, 
for 13 yards and two interceptions. Royce Freeman had 50, 50 yards on the ground, and Noah Fant had the only reception of the game for the Broncos with a 13-yard pass, screen pass. The Buffalo Bills hosted Justin Herbert and the L.A. Chargers. The Bills started off hot and scored a touchdown. The Chargers would fire right back and score their own touchdown to tie the game. Buffalo, however, would take an would take the 14-6 lead and increase it to 17-16 at or 17-6 at the break. Buffalo would score on their first possession of the second half, but the Chargers came roaring back. But Josh Allen would throw an interception. However, on the next play, Justin Herbert would return the favor and throw an interception as well. The Bills would get a field goal and hold on to beat the Chargers 27-17. Josh Allen would throw over 156 57 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Devin Singletary had 11 carries and 82 yards, and Gabriel Davis had 79 yards receiving and scored one touchdown. Justin Herbert threw for 316 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Austin Eckler had 44 yards on the ground and led the team in receiving in 85 yards through the air. The team without a home took on the rival Rams. The San Francisco 49ers traveled cross town to play the LA Rams. The first half was pretty slow as the 49ers would control the pace and take a 7-3 lead at the break. In the second half, the Rams didn't help themselves. Jared Goff would throw a pick six that would make it a 14-3 lead for the 49ers. But thanks to Aaron Donald, that would quickly change. He would have a huge strip that ended up being a touchdown for Troy Hill. The 49ers lead was trimmed from seven, down 17-13. to 13. On the next drive, L.A. scored thanks for the one-yard rush by rookie running back Cam Akers. The 49ers would get a field goal and force a Rams punt. San Francisco drove down the field and got a game-winning Robbie Gold field goal as time expired. The final score, the 49ers hold on to beat the Rams 23-20. Nick Mullins threw for 252 yards, one interception. Raheem Mostert rushed for 43 yards, one touchdown, and Debo Samuel had 133 yards receiving. Jared Goff threw 198 yards, two interceptions. Cam Akers had 84 yards receiving, one touchdown, Robert Woods finished the game with 80 yards on seven receptions. Many Rams fans are con- are contemplating, is Jared Goff the right guy for this team? And can they win a Super Bowl with the former number one overall pick out of California? The much-anticipated matchup between two Super Bowl champions, Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes, happened late Sunday afternoon on CBS. The Chiefs started off hot with a 17-0 lead thanks to Patrick Mahomes throwing for over 200 yards in the first half. Tyreek Hill was killing the Buccaneers. Nobody could stop him from Tampa, but never count out the six-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady. Brady ferociously led a comeback, but it just wasn't good enough. Kansas City would hold on to beat the Buccaneers 27-24. This is Tampa's now third straight loss. People are contemplating, are the Buccaneers just average? Patrick Mahomes, the leading candidate for MVP this season, threw for 462 yards, three touchdowns. Clyde edwards Hilaire had 11 rushes for 37 yards. Tyreek Hill had 13 receptions for 269 yards and three touchdowns. I would say Tyreek Hill had a pretty good game. Brady threw for 345 yards, three touchdowns, but did throw two INTs. Ryan Jones had 66 yards receiving, and Gronk had one of his best games as a Buccaneer with 106 yards through the air. The oldest rivalry in the National Football League took place on Sunday Night Football. The Green Bay Packers... One of the best teams in the NFC hosted their bitter rival, the Chicago Bears. Because of the injury to Nick Foles, the Chicago Bears were starting fourth-year quarterback Mitchell Trubisky. However, the Bears quickly fell back early and trailed 27-10 at the break. Trubisky struggled, and even though he had three touchdown passes, they were mostly in garbage time. Aaron Rodgers would be pretty much unstoppable as he would throw for not one, not two, not three, but four touchdown passes. They would have a 41-10 lead. But Chicago came back to make it a little bit more respectable. Final score, 41-25. Aaron Jones for the Packers rushed for 90 yards and 17 carries. Robert Tanya, the tight end, had five receptions for 57 yards and one score. David Montgomery had 103 yards rushing. Allen Robinson finished the game with 74 yards receiving and two touchdowns. The Battle of the Birds took place in the city of brotherly love at Financial Field on Monday Night Football. The Eagles, Eagles desperately needed to win versus the Seahawks in order to continue leading or continue still having a chance in the NFCs, which they technically do because that division is so bad. 
On the other side, the Seahawks also needed to win because they were in a tough NFC West, and if they won, they would take first place in the division since the Rams lost the Niners this week. Not much action, however, happened in the first half. The Seahawks would get a touchdown late in the second half, or late in the first half, thanks to Russell Wilson pass to David Moore. They would score again to make it a 14-0 lead. The Eagles did score before the half ended, but they would miss the extra point. Seattle led Philly 14-6 at the break. In the second half, the Seahawks only needed three field goals to solidify their eighth win of the season. The Eagles did score with 12 seconds left to play on a Hail Mary pass that was tipped to Richard Rodgers. That was Rodgers' second career Hail Mary touchdown pass. The first was when he was in Green Bay back in 2015 when the Packers defeated the Lions on Thursday Night Football. They would get the two-point conversion, but it wasn't good enough. The onside kick didn't work, and Seattle would hold on to beat the Eagles 23-17. Russell Wilson threw for 230 yards, one touchdown. Chris Carson rushed for 41 yards, one touchdown. And DK Metcalf continued beasting and feasting with 176, 177 yards receiving on 10 catches. On the other side, Carson Wentz threw for 215 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Carson Wentz also led the team in rushing with 42 yards. Dallas Dallas Goddard led the team in receiving with 75 yards and one score. Most people assume that rookie quarterback Jalen Hurts would play a lot on Monday night for the Eagles, but it didn't happen. He only played in a few snaps, which probably means that the starting job is still Carson Wentz for the foreseeable future. 